Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Good day everyone and welcome back to another episode of International Public Transport Showcases. In today's episode, we will be showcasing a full alignment of the North Luzon High Speed Railway in which trains departing from Manila to Taban Terminal will traverse through Central Luzon and the Ilocos regions to the city of Luwag via San Fernando at speeds of up to 350 kilometers per hour. The North Luzon High Speed Railway will be developed into two stages. Stage 1 will involve a 259 km section that would stretch from Manila to Taban Terminal to a new underground railway terminal at San Fernando in the province of La Union. However, Stage 1 will be split into two separate stages, with Stage 1A stretching from Bacaue in the province of Bulacan to San Fernando. This section will feature four intermediate stops at Clark, Talak, Urdaneta and Rosario stations. Stage 1B will extend south from Bokawe to Manila to Taban Terminal, running parallel to the Northern Commuter Railway Line currently under construction, and will feature one intermediate stop at Valenzuela, in the northern outskirts of Metro Manila. Stage 2 of the project will feature a 190km extension from San Fernando to Lawag in Ilocos Norte, with two intermediate stops at Candon and Vigan. The technical features of the line will total the length of the full alignments of both stages 1 and 2 to be 448 km long. The maximum speed of the line will initially operate trains at speeds of 300 km per hour due to operational costs, but eventually will have the design speed allow them to operate at speeds of 350 km per hour. The entire line will be operated at a standard gauge railway and the electrification of the line will feature 25 kV alternating current operating at 60 Hz. The maximum banking will be at 4 degrees with a maximum gradient of 1 in 30. The seating arrangements of the trains would feature 224 seats reserved for first-class passengers with a wide 2x2 seating layout. Economy class will feature 580 seats with a 3x2 seating layout and non-reserved carriages would be able to accommodate 448 seats with an organized in a 2x2 layout plus additional room for standing areas that will allow 392 standing passengers. This would give us a safe total capacity of 1,644 passengers, considering that standing room would accommodate 3 to 4 passengers per square metre. The rolling stock for the Manila to Lawag stretch of the high-speed railway line will feature trains that can be able to run at speeds of up to 350 kilometres per hour. The width of the trains would be similar to those in China and Japan, roughly 3.4 metres wide. As I mentioned earlier, these 16 car trains would be able to fit 1644 passengers altogether and this 16 car layout would allocate 4 carriages for first class, 6 carriages each for economy class and for non-reserved passengers. There will be 20 separate toilets on each 16 car train with 8 reserved for first class. Here we have an overview of the 448 km long alignment for the North Luzon High Speed Railway. Now note that there is a colour coding scheme for the lines and for the stations. The green line here indicates stage 1A between Bacaue and San Fernando. Stage 1B is indicated in yellow which you can not exactly see but it is situated between Bacaue and Manila to Taban. Stage 2 is coloured in magenta between San Fernando and Luwag. For the stations that are locked in capital letters, these stations will be served by all trains. That includes express, all stops and limited stop services. Now note that there is a variation in stopping patterns which I will release to you a little bit later. Stations in blue will be served by some trains that include some limited stop services as well as all stop services. So without further ado, 
Let us analyze the alignment starting from Manila to Taban. Trains will begin in Manila to Taban, which is the main terminus for all commuter and eventually high-speed rail services. Trains will leave the station with an initial top speed of 60 km per hour up until the Y junction right here. And from the Y junction, trains will accelerate to a speed of 120 km per hour. Now note that the entire alignment between Manila and Bokawe will be grade separated. Now just north of C3, just in the east of Kalaokan right here, there will be a tunnel, a short tunnel, that will descend for a brief few kilometres all the way up to Valenzuela Station. This is due to the engineering challenges associated with putting a high-speed railway line on top of a commuter railway line and a motorway at the same time. There will be a stop at Valenzuela Station where all trains will stop and serve the northern suburbs of Metro Manila. The line will continue above ground in a grade separated pair of tracks which will separate high-speed rail from commuter rail services. Just after this section of straight track right here, there will be a stop at Bokawe Station. Now this is where stages 1A and stages 1B will be separated. Before the opening of stage 1B and after the opening of stage 1A, passengers would have to alight at Bokawe Station from their respective journeys in the central Luzon provinces to continue their journeys to Metro Manila. The separation of stages 1A and 1B are usually, as I mentioned before, the engineering challenges involved with constructing a high-speed railway alignment through the urban agglomerate of Metro Manila. Bokawe will also serve the nearby Philippine Arena, the world's largest indoor arena, and it will also serve the surrounding towns and areas throughout the province of Bulacan. The alignment will deviate from the commuter railway line and from here trains will accelerate to a speed of 350 km per hour. The line will briefly run parallel to the North Luzon Expressway up until the Angat River near the border of Pampanga. From here the high-speed railway line will run on its own independent alignment. It will cross the Pasig Patrero River, I believe that's how you pronounce it. It will cross this river here, and then after crossing the river, the railway line will descend into a short tunnel where it will meet up at Clark Airport as an underground station. Clark Station will serve the Clark Freeport Zone, which is right here, as well as the airport so that passengers can be able to seamlessly connect to their flights. This station will also play an, an, an important role rather in allowing Clark Airport to serve as Manila's second airport, and this will allow the region to have an enhanced integration into the global network. Just north of Clark Airport, the line will re-emerge to ground level before crossing the Sokobia River. Trains will continue to run in the alignment at 350 km per hour before the line reaches Tarlac Station. The regional intermediate stop will not just serve the nearby city of Tarlac, which is right here, but will also serve some of the surrounding towns as well, such as Concepcion, Victoria, and some of the other towns nearby. Just a quick side note, all stations will serve as major transport interchanges for their respective provinces that would allow railway passengers to interchange with cars, buses, jeepneys and tricycles. The roads surrounding the stations would need to be upgraded in order to accommodate the increase in traffic surrounding the station. The next intermediate stop is Urdaneta Station. This station will serve the province of Pangasinan, which nearby cities such as Vilasis, Rosales, Dagupan and Santa Barbara will all use this station to access the rest of the northwestern Luzon regions as well as Metro Manila. I did consider um, one point allowing for a branch line to extend to Dagupan and 
Ali Alaminos city. The line would, however, maybe this would perhaps probably come. Uh, this would be built in, potentially in the near future, but it would have to be built after the completion of the North Luzon high speed rail network. Anyhow, the line will continue to traverse through the Pangasinan region where trains, as I said before, will continue to run at 350 kilometers per hour. The line will cross through Buad River in northern Pangasinan before reaching Rosario Station in the province of La Union. While the township of Rosario is relatively small, this station will play an important role serving the Cordill Cordillera administrative region and the, mount the nearby mountain city of Baguio. While there is the potential extension of a railway line from Rosario to Baguio City, engineering challenges due to landslides and earthquakes could hinder the development of a Baguio railway branch. Anyhow, the line will cross through a short mountain range before bypassing the western side of Agoo. It will run through the western coasts of La Union, cross the Balili River, which is right here, before descending into a tunnel. This tunnel will drill underneath the outskirts of San Fernando before reaching San Fernando proper in an underground station. This station here marks the terminus of the 259 kilometer long North Luzon high speed rail project for stage one until the 190 kilometer extension to Luwag would be completed. Stage two of the high speed rail extension to Luwag will see an underground section of the high speed rail just near the township of San Juan re-emerge to ground level. There isn't much that goes on between here and San Fernando stations except that it will cross the Amburayan River which is a little bit further here which is just around here this is the Amburayan River and enter the, provident, the province of Ilocosur. The next stop on this on this line is Candon Station which will be coming up very shortly. The city itself is not relatively large, around 60,000 people, but the city will be able to potentially accommodate more people through the development of high-speed railways. Trains will continue along the alignment, continuing at their speed of 350 kilometers per hour, with the occasional tunnel and bridge along the way. There is one significant tunnel, which is right here, crossing Heroes Hill near the township of Santa and just after passing the township of Santa the railway will cross the Lagben River via a bridge before the line makes its way to Vigan station. A station here in Vigan will allow for the growth of tourism so that tourists can be able to visit the colonial buildings of this historic city. The line will continue to run north and run along the western foothills of the Cordillera Ranges. There will continue to be the occasional tunnels and bridges along the way, perhaps uh, due to the uneven terrain, but as soon as it reaches um, the twin cities of Pauai and Batak, which is right here, now you may notice that there is a mislocation of the labels here, it's um, Google's, it's Google's coding anyway. I digress. But after Pauai and Batak, there is no, there isn't really much engineering challenges, so the line will just continue on ground level before reaching the township, or rather the city of Lawag, where trains will terminate at Lawag, and this station would serve the entire region of Ilocos Norte. This concludes the North Luzon High Speed Rail Project for the Philippines. As a quick overview, the 448 km high speed rail line linking Manila with the northern provinces of Luzon will be constructed into two major stages, with stage one being subdivided into two smaller substages. The high speed line will be able to help deliver and promote investment into the North Luzon regions 
as well as the central Luzon regions through the advancement of tourism and employment opportunities for these regions. It will also help alleviate issues caused by overpopulation in the megalopolis of Metro Manila by reallocating large populations into these regions. Anyway guys, I'm gonna wrap this up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like and favorite the video. Don't forget to share this video with your families and friends, especially those who live along this region. I will see you next time. Goodbye for now.